Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode of A Road Trip, brought to you by two uh, road dog heads. Road head dogs. No, definitely not that one. Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, recently my Hassie was doing that thing that dogs do when they want to go on a walk where they stare at you with their cute sad eyes until you get the message that they need to go outside and destroy someone's lawn with fertilizer straight from the source. What I'm trying to say is my Hassie needed some one-on-one -on -one time because I haven't shot with it recently. That and I just picked up a metered prison for it which you would know if you watched my previous video which you didn't. That's right. It was the strug life for me as I was trying to decipher what the hell I was actually taking a photo of through the waist level finder with the image flipped. So I brought in the big guns and bought a Hasselblad PME 45, which kind of makes the camera look like a bong. So I packed up my Hassie with my two 645 backs and a bag of that dank shit. And my brother Matt and I headed north to the sunny forests of Oregon. Just kidding, it pretty much rained the whole time. It would be a pretty long drive. And what better time to take a long road trip than when gas prices are at their highest. Anyway, after what felt like six hours of driving, we stopped off at the Chart Room restaurant, or the Le Chart Room Bistro, if you're French. Eager to get my first shots out of the way, I loaded up some Cinestill BWXX, a black and white cinema film. I had never shot BWXX before, and I didn't really know what to expect. Either way, I think it's not too bad, especially this beautiful disaster of a shot. I think no matter how many times you try to take a photo of someone in public, it's always going to feel a little weird or like they're going to catch you and then decide to beat the crap out of you. Luckily, this gentleman was a little bit older and would probably get a little tired after beating me up and need to take a rest, at which point I could escape. After about four more hours of driving, we arrived at our campsite on the southern Oregon coast and decided to check out what we were working with, you know, landscape wise. With my tent pitched, literally and sexually, I decided to throw a one quarter pro mist on old Slappy and take a shot. And boy oh boy do those highlights bloom. I think maybe a bit too much, if I'm being honest. It's kind of distracting, like too much chest hair on a guy. En route, I picked up some Cool Ranch Flaming Hot Doritos, intrigued by what madman dared to come up with this formula. How can a chip be both cool and flaming hot? I was interested in finding out. You wanna try one of these? Sure. After all, this was the new frontier of Dorito technology, and I was here for it. It was kind of like blending the new with the old, in terms of a new prism finder on an old mechanical hassy. Anyway, the chips were kind of ass. Back at camp, we headed down to the Overlook with a few brewskis in cargo. After all, it was probably beer clock somewhere, and what else is there to do while you're camping? Stick fireworks in pine cones and see what happens? Actually, yeah, that would have been tight. I wish we did that. Here's another example of the one quarter promise going absolutely hog wild in a backlit scene. At face value, the look is pretty cool. It's definitely attention grabbing. But the more you stare at it, the more you realize it's too damn much and it needs to chill. I also took this photo on Gold 200 and I quite like it. It's brown and soft, which are really the only two things I look for in a good image and a good bathroom session. Back at camp, we made burgers and it started to rain. So after kissing Matt goodnight on the lips like a true homie, we went to sleep. We 
decided to check out the surrounding coastal area the next morning and it was beautiful, especially on Cinestill BWXX. This shot here is pretty good. I think the only thing that could have made it better is if I shot it with a yellow filter, which would have darkened the sky and ocean a bit. So Oregon has this weird rule where you're not allowed to fill your gas tank yourself. It would definitely take some getting used to, but we are in a whole new land and needed to embrace the culture. Anyway, our next stop on our lighthouse tour of the Pacific Northwest was a lighthouse, if you can believe that. I shot black and white of some people kind of just walking around on the beach and I think they turned out pretty cool. I've been trying to incorporate more people in my shots lately to show scale. We finally headed up and reached the lighthouse and talked to the lighthouse volunteer. She said one time somebody was routinely cleaning the very expensive and irreplaceable lighthouse lens up top and a piece broke off. Now as an adult I've never actually shit my pants that you know of, but I imagine if that were me I probably would have fear blasted shit everywhere and then get down on my hands and knees in the sludge probably and pray that they have insurance for it. Anyway, driven mad by the Fresnel lens up top, we had to get closer. I actually really like this shot a lot. The lighting is perfect and the lens is kind of nicely framed by the tree branches. After hitting our yearly quota for exercise this year, I mean it, I'm not doing any more exercising this year. It started to rain. We finally reached our hotel in Cape Kiwanda, but I was kind of a dumbass and I accidentally booked the room for September instead of when we were actually there. Luckily the front desk lady thought Matt and I were a cute couple and offered to fix it for free. After an impressive under one minute shower and shave, we wanted to take the moose, which is the nickname for Matt's oversized Prius here, for a drive on the beach, because how often do you get to run over seagulls? Unfortunately, the entrance was closed and the other entrance down the beach was a bit of a hilly pit. The moose probably could have handled it, no problem, but it was raining and we kind of had other things on our mind. The next morning we found a better entrance for the beach and Tokyo drifted right the f onto it. Of course, it was still raining, but it was pretty cool nonetheless. I swapped out the BWXX in the Hassie for a roll of Ilford HP5, which I'd be pushing to 1600 ISO, which as far as I'm concerned is the only way you can shoot that film. I was also using the Promist, but it was more or less just a way to stop rain from hitting the actual front element of the lens. Here's a comparison of Gold 200 and Pushed HP5. There's really no reason to shoot color that morning. Everything was pretty gray and dreary. The HP5, on the other hand, looks pretty goddamn good. As we moved up the coast, the fog started to roll in and I was totally down for it. And so was my Hassie, which continued to work flawlessly even in the rain.
Anyway, it was lighthouse time again, and guess what? It was still f***ing raining. I protected the Hassie by hiding it in my rain jacket and only ever bringing it out to expose. Like someone in an oversized trench coat exposing themselves to people and then running away, if that helps you picture it. I really like these shots, especially this one. It's got it all going on. Layers, black and white tones, and even rainwater distortion. Later on, it finally stopped raining for like two seconds, and we stopped at a nearby coastal viewpoint. It was time to finally stop doing baby shit and output some real color. And I'm glad I did. I mean, this shot here is definitely going into the portfolio. It's just such a simple composition, but it's so moody. So yeah, Cannon Beach was pretty cool, and I would have loved to stay longer if it wasn't so expensive. Fortunately, we had probably the only sunny evening we had our entire trip there, and uh, I wasn't just gonna lay there lifelessly and just take it, you know what I mean? This shot is pretty cool. I think the only thing that could have made it perfect is if a person was in the window staring out of it longingly. Then it would be totally Edward Hopper certified. But this isn't a painting, it's reality. And reality sucks. So I think it's pretty good, all things considered. Ah yes, this shot. So this is actually Kodak Gold 200, but because I wasn't really happy with how the colors looked, I converted it to black and white, but not with the saturation slider in Lightroom because that's way too easy and I have to make my life a living hell of difficulty. I actually reshot the image in my studio with the Hassi and a yellow filter on Tmax 100. I guess it's sort of like an image transfer and did it turn out okay? I guess if you have low standards and you're fine with squinting at it from 30 feet away, then yeah, I mean, it's certainly now black and white. This process certainly did save some of my color shots. I'll give it that, but I probably won't do this again. There's a lot of issues with the process, like added softness, camera shake, etc. The next morning we headed into Portland for a second or two to get lunch at Tokyo Sando and it was totally worth it, despite the whole city smelling kind of like a turlet. I honestly think I had more good food on this trip than actual good shots. Anyway, we started heading south from there to our campsite, which was ominously being surrounded by deer. Fleeing a potential ambush like cowards, we headed out to take a look at a nearby waterfall. We decided to head down to the base of the waterfall because we needed the exercise, especially after eating and drinking every carb in sight for the past few days. I also continued my trend of placing my expensive camera gear precariously on the edge of stuff in wet conditions.
Back at camp, it seemed that Bambi and his gang of thugs had disappeared for the time being, so we could finally rest up a little bit. Moss always points to civilization. pretty happy with the PME 45. It's super clear and the metering seems to be spot on. What more could an asshole like me ask for? slamming some perfectly adequately sized wieners on the grill, it was time to call it a night and await the incoming storm. Turns out the storm was a total f***ing downpour equivalent to a biblical flood. I know this footage looks kind of like the Blair Witch Project or something, but I was genuinely scared as my tent was filling up with water. So when the rain finally let up a little bit, we got the flying f*** out of there like two bubonic plague infested rats escaping the Titanic. The time periods there don't really sync up, but you get the idea. As we headed home, the rain literally never let up until we crossed the California border, as if somehow the high cost of living keeps the rain away. Anyway, on the long drive back down, I had plenty of time to think about how lucky we are to be exploring the frontier and bonding through brotherhood, good times, bad times, and of course today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform that I've been using for several years to host my online photography portfolio. Squarespace makes it easy to pick and choose what goes where, and with hundreds of template options at your disposal, you get a running start in building your perfect website in no time. I'm quite picky when it comes to arranging photos in a certain way, and oftentimes I don't know what I want until I see it there before me. Luckily with Squarespace's intuitive user interface and seamless integration, I'm able to try out many different looks and experiment with layout hassle-free. Plus, if you run into a snag, Squarespace offers 24-7 award-winning customer support. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash granny days. And if you use the code granny days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. Anyway, it was nice to be home after somehow becoming permanently moist from all the rain. Despite all the storms, the Hassi is somehow running better than ever, and I can't wait to get her back out on the road. Maybe with more than one lens option, though. The Zeiss 60mm is great and all, but Daddy needs a wide-angle lens, too. And maybe some Fuji stocks, because damn, it was pretty green up there. I think this is my favorite shot from the trip. When and if you nail a color photo, it just goes from good to extraordinary, and that's what I consider this shot. The black and white stuff was cool too, but I feel like it's kind of a risky gamble shooting color because a lot of times the color can just not work for you. Black and white is kind of safe. I feel like I keep 80% of the photos I take on black and white, whereas on color it's probably more like 15 to 20%. Maybe I'm just meant to start shooting black and white forever, but if I do, does that mean I can tell people who shoot color that they're cowards who don't understand true fine art? But speaking of nasty cash grabs, I don't think I've chugged my Mountain Dew of the day. In case you forgot, I'm in the middle of a campaign to get Kodak to bring Aerochrome back by chugging one of these bottles of what's well, basically pizza grease every day. Doesn't get any easier. <laughs> 